Ross, looking back at this season, what did you think of it? Um, it's a strange one. Uh, not something I've ever been involved with. I don't think like that before. And I'm not sure I ever will again. Uh, hopefully, anyway. Um, but I think, you know, obviously we started really well. Um, it was very, very, very encouraging. And then we kind of hit that bit of tricky bit of form in the middle. Didn't do very well. Um, but is what it is, isn't it? I think we're then... I think the sort of the last month or two were were sort of looking to build towards next season, and that was you know a load of positives in there. I think we've kind of found our best team of the players that we had, our best formation, um, and I think sort of a lot of things fell into place. It was it was a it was a difficult, like I say, middle period of the season, but there was a, you know a lot of change going on, and that's definitely for the better long term. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I don't think obviously we weren't. I don't don't think we were going to get sort of near the playoffs, but I think a seventh or eighth sort of spot would have been would have been about fair. I think I think it would have been not unfair, but unrealistic. Um, you know, given like I say that that tricky period in the middle to to finish in the playoffs, um, especially with a squad of sort of thirteen, fourteen injuries at key times to key players a couple of people moving on it was it was it was just it was it was it was tough but i think like i say towards the end we got we got it together and, and it's it's encouraging for next season to see what we can do i think we obviously finished on a on a really good positive um and a real good run even though we lost the last game but the four or five previous to that all the performances were really really positive what have you been doing to keep in shape during the, the lockdown Hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, I think actually, sort of the 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 period up to when we didn't know when it was going to finish, I was actually doing quite a lot, probably uh, more than what we'd be doing anyway. Um, in terms of, I was working from home and things like that, so I could you know go for a run at lunchtime, um, do do a few bits here and there. So. It was it was one of those. I'd, I'd tried to keep myself as fit as possible. Then once we got the news that obviously the season had finished, um, rightly in my eyes, by the way, I don't see why any deliberation over football is still happening. You know, when there's thirty odd thousand people died in this country, and you know hundreds of thousands all over the world, why anyone's even talking about football? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't even be a thing. It should just be cancelled altogether. Um, but. I, since then I've not not done a great deal um, we got sort of you know indications of when we come back for pre-season a couple of weeks ago so since then I kind of picked it up again really um, I think it's important to have that break because if, if you don't you just you don't get that proper mental break from it um, so I always like to have two or three weeks where I don't do an awful lot um, but yeah starting to starting to kind of get back into it now and, and wind back up and then hopefully I'll be in I mean, anyone who knows me knows I'm not like a runner or anything like that. But you know, uh, hopefully I'll be in all right shape. Like by the time we come back, if you were to be in lockdown with any player, uh, who would it be? It's a tough question because I think everyone's kind of been tested a bit during this lockdown period. Um, I'm lucky that I, my missus, I think she quite likes me, and I quite like her as well. She's all right. Um, so it's been nice. Um, uh, probably, I don't know. I think it would be someone mental to like pass the time. I think someone like Gaza, someone like that, just someone who's just an absolute fruit loop. I think they'd just make you laugh, wouldn't they? Or if we couldn't get Gaza because he'd be busy, I reckon Stano would be all right. Um, yeah. it'll keep you busy, wouldn't he? He wouldn't sleep very much though, would he? He just, yeah, or sit down. You wouldn't be able to, you know, you wouldn't be able to keep tabs on him for more than about five minutes at a time. But yeah, I'll have Gaza and then failing that, I'll have Stano. Who's a player you look up to, um, whether that was growing up um, in like the youth system or just in general now? Um, I th- I'm a, a Newcastle fan, um, so obviously growing up during the period that I grew up in in my early years, uh, Shea Given was was you know he played hundreds and hundreds of games for Newcastle. Um, obviously senior international, then went on to play for Man City and all the rest of it, and I just thought that. You know, like I say, him being a Newcastle, uh, me being a Newcastle fan, and him being so have played for Newcastle for so many years in that in that position and doing it so well um, during a you know the time when I sort of remember football was not being particularly successful. Um, 
he did very well. So I would say that Shea Given probably top of my my list in terms of inspiration. Not making me want to be a keeper. I never really wanted to be a keeper. I just could not like I can't run. I can't do anything like that. And nobody wants yeah. to be a keeper. Let's be honest. Like it's it's one of those like twelve I balls just smashed out of you. You don't. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't. I don't know. I did as a kid. No. Like, when I was like six, seven, when I started to get into football, that's all I wanted to be, to be fair. Yeah. 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 Yes. He must strange. be nuts, Dan. But yeah, no, I think I, I think I wanted to be an outfield player, but I found out that it's a lot of work, a lot of running about, and I wasn't, I'm just not built for it. Not got the, uh, not, just not got the, the, I don't know. I just wouldn't be able to get that fit for a start. Um, yeah. And I'm probably not very good. So, you know, you got to do what you're best at, you? even if you don't necessarily uh, think it's right. Um, <laughs> you know, you got to do what you're best at. Like I say, you got to do what gives you the best chance. Who would you say has got the best banter in the dressing room? I don't know. Um, I'd probably say Fenners is quite dry. Uh, and, you know, uh, I've known him quite a while, so I, I get his stuff. Maybe other people don't, but I, I, pro- I think someone might have said him before, so I don't want to give him too much credit, but I'll probably go with him just off the top of my head. Um, like I say, I don't want to blow you know too much smoke up him, but he's all right. He's quite funny from time to time. It's a bit annoying, but yeah. From giving someone credit for their uh, sense of humour, who would you say is the worst dressed in the? In the oh, the worst dressed. Um, I think the marshals. They come as a package. Obviously, Alex isn't with us anymore, but um, I think they do it. They do it. You know, together. Um, I wouldn't back. I don't back myself as as much as someone who's got a great amount of not dress sense, but I'm just not asked. Like I just, yeah. I'm quite you know, quite happy with the jeans and t-shirt. It's not it's not what I'm about. So I'm I'm probably deflecting a little bit. Um, in truth, um, I don't know. You can't put yourself bottom there, can you? So I'm going to say those two comes a package, and then probably me. Um, there's some not not bad dressers in the team, to be fair. So yeah, um, so yeah, it's probably I'm probably in the bottom three. Yeah, would you say you're someone who prioritises comfort? Probably, yeah. Not not you know, like I say, I'm not someone who go and spend like hundreds of pounds on a jacket or some trainers or whatever. I'm quite happy with like a a fairly decent t-shirt and some jeans and some trainers or whatever. Like a, for me, like. If we're going out on a night out, it's about the it's about being with the lads or being with whoever, um, and just having a laugh. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those who spend ages get ready. I'll just go and have a shower, um, chuck whatever on, and then go and have some a few beers. So I'm not really bothered. What would you say you've been doing um, a lot more of, or picked up um, during this time of where there's no football, uh, which you normally wouldn't do? I've definitely played a lot more cod. Uh, 100%. My mates love Warzone. I can't stand it, to be honest. Exactly um, same, yeah. I play a lot of um, hardcore stuff. So when you get on that and you know, you're know you shooting people like 30 times and they're not dead, and then everyone's like, yeah, come on, Warzone. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'd, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather do something else. And I get get left out a lot. I think they might try, you know, I, th- I think they might come with me sometimes, but they're just like, no, we'll just play Warzone. You can play on your own. So I'm like, right, okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I've definitely been doing a bit of that. Um, it also, it's been nice. I think we've been very lucky with the weather. Um, definitely. So I've been going, doing quite a lot of walking, um, try and get out. Obviously, you, you can't go out that much, but um, uh, sort of as much as we can, kind of go out for an hour or so, uh, just to walk around where we live um, and do that. It's just something to do, isn't it? Um, there's there's yeah. not a lot, not a lot else on, have we? Um, so we might as well what would you say is your favourite video game quite a few um, as a series I probably like the, the like the Fallout series Grand Theft Auto I'm a, I'm a fan of that kind of game but then you can't beat kind of the classics you know what you, what you play with your mates the um, FIFA card all of those because it's just a laugh um, I think we're quite quite lucky in that we have you know a good group of us who, who play together sort of four or five of us who play quite regularly so it's always nice you can have a, a couple of games or you can stay on for a few hours um someone will always be about so it's it is good from that perspective but yeah like i say there's there's probably four or five that i'll play on rotation i won't go far too far out of my comfort zone with that um but the some tom clancy stuff as well i like that um you know all that kind of stuff um 
But I think everyone's going to say Carter and FIFA, aren't they, really? Um, exactly. Just from the playing with their mates perspective. Um, but yeah. Going on, going on to some support questions. Uh, Zane has asked on Facebook the best player you've played with. So it's a tough one, really, because I've played with some, some decent players, especially in non-league, who have then gone on to um, play in the league and things like that. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a tough one from that perspective. But I think um, I'm going to choose another goalkeeper Again, I didn't really play with him, but I was at the, same, at the club at the same time as, as him. Um, and that's Doris de Vries. He was at, at Forest um, and probably played 50, 100 times for Forest. Um, but he was just brilliant in, in training and everything. Like he was just really kind of supportive, always had time for like the younger lads. And this is a guy who's won like, you know, loads of stuff, played in the Champions League, played at the New Camp. And like he's just a, just a regular bloke, like a really nice guy. Um, and he's just like, it was weird. Like, he just never dropped anything. And you just think, like, why can't I be that good? It's frustrating watching people like that because yeah. it just seems so effortless. Um, and I think they're the players that you look at and think, like, the, the talent is scary. Um, so I think, yeah, Doris Reese is just brilliant. I think, obviously, someone in, in a similar position to you, you can appreciate it a lot more. You know, if, if it's a striker or whatever like that, you can you just say, yeah. well, he scored this many goals in this many games. But from like a technical aspect, you can, I think you can appreciate it loads more if you know what's going on. Um, so he was, he was incredible. Um, so yeah, I'd probably go with him. Yeah. Uh, Jack has asked, what, what would you say is your best uh, game in a Ilkeson shirt? I don't know. Um, there, there was a couple towards the end, sort of when, you know, uh, after Christmas, before obviously we stopped, I, I really enjoyed the league game. Um, you know, when we when we beat them. I think that was a really good day for everyone. Obviously, they came and they'd not lost for something like 14, 15 games or maybe even more, I don't really know. Um, but we put in like an incredible performance. I think everybody was was brilliant. I think that was good from a, a team perspective and from a personal perspective. Um, and it's nice to say that you've had a good game in a win. Um, sometimes you can get absolutely battered and you might let four in, but, you know, it could have been seven or eight. Um, so there's no point picking those really because you haven't, you know, you can have a good a game as you want. You've still let four in. Um, I think it was, was it 2-0? 2-0, uh, yeah. So It can't have been that rem- memorable, can it? Because um, I can't remember the score. But I seem to remember having a, a decent game um, in that one. Enjoyed it. And then there was a couple early on um, when the weather was nice. I think everyone enjoys football a bit more. Um, yeah. When I think we beat Worksop, I think it was 2-1 yeah. at home. And I think Kev Bastos scored like in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, um, I remember doing had, the, uh, Twitter that game. Yeah, ninth um, minute, and then that backflip, which he did. Yeah, yeah, the, the backflip. I said, no, that's, surely that's a fine. That is, <laughs> um, you can't be doing backflips. It's not on. Um, but yeah, no, that, that was a that was a good day as well. Like I say, I think you know when the sun's out and it's it's a good feel, especially down the ground. We've got a big crowd and. I think there was probably seven or eight hundred there that day. Obviously, they yeah. they brought a few down as well. So, um, it's probably one that sticks in my memory. Those those two more than others. Um, so yeah, I'll probably go with that, uh, one of those. Yeah, and uh, finally to finish, what would you say? Uh, who would you say your favourite goalkeeper at the minute? Um, at the minute, I'd I like um, I like uh, Jan Oblak, uh, Atletico Madrid. Yeah, I think I think. Again, he's one of those, he just looks very effortless in everything he does. Um, there's a few in the Premier League, obviously, the, the, you know, the obvious ones. Edison, Allison, those guys make it look very, very easy. Again, very frustrating, but they make it look very easy. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, like I said, I do like Jan Oblak. I think, he's, I think he's brilliant. I think he's a little bit, you know, unorth- not unorthodox, but kind of does what he does. He's very unbothered. He's very looks very calm and just chilled out about everything. He's not, he doesn't get too up or too down. Um, but he's, he's, he's very, very good. And I'm, I think he'll, no disrespect to, you know, Atletico Madrid or anyone, but I, I think he'll be at a Barcelona, et cetera, et cetera, in, in, in the next couple of years. Well, that's what, if he wants to be, whatever. But um, I think he's probably the best in the world for me right now. 